Disney princesses have come a long way, especially in the past two years. We now know that we don't need to wait around for a Prince Charming to save us from danger. Instead of reimagining fairy tale characters, we are going to talk about some incredible women that we would love to see as Disney princesses. If you're a Disney fan, you'll want to make sure you check out our friends over at Screen Rant. Now let's get started. Do you want to be a DIY expert? Check out our friends at Crafty Hackers. They have the best hacks, crafts, and everything DIY. Watch their videos for the best household tricks, DIY decor, and fun recipes. If you love making crafts with your friends or just trying new things, they have everything you're looking for. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome hacks and crafts. Hedy Lamar. Like the other Disney princesses, Hedy Lamar was a beautiful woman, but she was so much more than that. Most people know that she was a famous actress who starred in films like Boomtown, Comrade X, and Zeigfeld Girl. She was undeniably gorgeous and a talented actress, but like many princesses reportedly felt lonely and isolated at times. She was born Hedwig Eva Maria Keisler before she eventually changed her name for her film career. When her home of Austria was under the control of Nazi forces, Lamar managed to sneak herself and her mother to the safety of the United States. At one point, she found herself in an unhappy marriage, and there are two stories about how she escaped. She claims that she disguised herself as a maid and gave her husband the slip, but other accounts claim that she piled on all of her jewelry for a dinner party, and once it was over, she slipped out into the night and disappeared. When she wasn't pulling off princess-worthy pranks, she was tinkering around as a self-taught inventor. She helped develop a radio guidance system for allied torpedoes that managed to protect classified messages from the enemy. It's those principles that you have to thank for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi technology today. While we're talking about technology, go ahead and click that subscribe button to see more awesome videos from the taco. Catherine Switzer We all know there was a long period of history in which women were denied basic rights such as the right to vote. But few people realize that this extended to many other areas, and it's embarrassingly not that long ago. Catherine Switzer had a simple goal in 1967, running in the Boston Marathon. Unfortunately, women weren't allowed to compete in the event and wouldn't be officially until 1972. Her coach told her that it was impossible for her to compete because as a woman, she was too fragile. But as Disney princesses know not to let naysayers keep her down, Switzer registered under the gender-neutral name K.V. Switzer and started running. During the race, many officials tried to physically restrain her, including a man named Jock Semple, who tried to rip her number off. Fortunately, like most Disney princesses, Switzer had a trusty sidekick, her boyfriend and ex-football player Tom Miller, who tackled Semple so that Switzer could proceed. After the event, Will Cloney, the Boston Athletic Association director, came down hard on Switzer, condemning her actions and adding that if she was his daughter, he would have disciplined her, which is a totally professional and not at all awkward statement. Needless to say, it didn't slow Switzer down, and she would go on to compete in many more marathons, encouraging other women to do the same. Margaret Hamilton In terms of fantastical human achievements, it's really hard to beat getting a human being to the moon. In the 1960s, women still couldn't run marathons, and a young Margaret Hamilton was working at MIT to support her husband while he attended Harvard Law. Not only was she a woman working in a highly technical field, but she was a mother as well, occasionally bringing her daughter into the lab with her. She led a team that was credited with developing the software needed for both Apollo and Skylab. Making this all the more impressive was that back then, software engineering wasn't a thing. In fact, many people credit Hamilton with creating the term to describe what she was working on at the time. The space race was an exciting time, but it also put an enormous amount of pressure on Hamilton and the code she was creating. As thanks for her work getting men on the moon, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by now former U.S. President Barack Obama. Over the course of her career, she published over 130 papers and was involved in 60 projects and six major programs. She also founded her own company, Hamilton Technology, based on her software design. Claudette Colvin Like most Disney princesses, Claudette Colvin was just a teenager when she made her mark on the world. And like a true Disney princess, she was often underestimated.
estimated because of her age and her gender. When we ask you to think of an activist famous for refusing to move out of her seat on the bus in order to protest segregation, who comes to mind? If you said Rosa Parks, we don't blame you, but you should know that she wasn't the first. In 1955, Colvin was a student at a segregated high school and had to take a segregated city bus to get there. She was a member of the NAACP Youth Council, and one day, she was asked to give up her seat on the bus so a white woman could sit down. Colvin refused and was thrown off the bus and arrested. This occurred nine months before Rosa Parks would go through pretty much the same thing. She was one of the five plaintiffs in the case of Browder v. Gale, which concerned whether or not segregating buses was unconstitutional. Thankfully, the case ended in favor of terminating segregation. Sybil Lettington We've all heard of the midnight ride of Paul Revere, but it's not that impressive when stacked up against the feet of this heroine. Her name is Sybil Lettington, and she was only 16 years old when she took her very own infamous ride. Sybil was the eldest of 11 siblings, and one night in 1977, she leapt onto her horse, Star, and went for a very long ride. She rode over 40 miles through Putnam County, New York, in order to warn militiamen that the British were coming. On the way to meet her father, Colonel Henry Lettington, she warned the people of Danbury, Connecticut, as she passed through. At least 400 soldiers were saved, along with many townspeople who had ample time to flee thanks to Sybil. And that's not all. She was a hero long before that when royals showed up to capture her father. Thinking quickly, Sybil lit all the candles she had and organized her siblings to march around the house. This gave Ichabod Prosser and the other royalists the impression that troops were guarding the house and they fled into the night. Clever, brave, and willing to risk her life for her family. That certainly sounds like a Disney princess to us. Woman Chief Don't get us wrong, we love the Disney versions of Pocahontas, but if you're familiar with the real story, you know it wasn't all sunshine and singing trees. We're going to tell you about another incredible Native American heroine that most people know as Woman Chief or Pine Leaf. At the age of 10, she was taken prisoner and adopted by a warrior of her new tribe who had lost his sons. She grew up learning how to hunt and fight, and when her adopted father passed away, she assumed control of his lodge. She became known throughout the land for her incredible skills in battle. Because of her battle prowess, she eventually became chief and her lodge prospered. She gained infamy when a rival group attacked a fort sheltering both her own people and white families. Pineleaf managed to fight them all off without a second thought. She did eventually marry four times, in fact. Oh, and her four spouses were all fellow women. When she wasn't on the battlefield, she was frequently found negotiating peace treaties with other Upper Missouri tribes. Katoyan Katoyan was a Mongolian princess in real life, but she was so incredible that we think she deserves to join the rank of Disney princesses. She was the daughter of Kaidu, who was the most powerful ruler of Central Asia by 1280. Many Disney princesses have endearing quirks. Ariel brushes her hair with forks. Belle can't keep her nose out of a book, and Katuyan loves to wrestle potential romantic suitors. No, we're not making that up. Forget about a romantic kiss to find your true love, this gal demanded a man who could hold his own against her in battle. Needless to say, she amassed a ton of horses. When she wasn't wrestling men into submission, she was making them flee in terror on the battlefield. She was an incredible warrior known for riding one of her many horses into enemy ranks and snatching up captives. To her father, she was the favorite child and an invaluable asset in battle. It's said that she did eventually marry, but accounts differ as to who she ended up with. Some say that her husband was a man who failed to assassinate her father and was taken captive, while others say that she fell in love with a ruler like her father. Either way, we assume he was one heck of a wrestler. Murasaki Shikibu Some Disney princesses just want to find their prince charming, but not Murasaki Shikibu. She wanted nothing more than to be able to write books, but this wasn't thought to be possible during the high-end period of Japan. Women were banned from learning Chinese, the written language. To make matters worse, appeals to her father fell on deaf ears. He acknowledged her talent, but lamented that she wasn't a man and therefore couldn't learn to write. However, Murasaki was determined and would listen at the door while her brothers were tutored. After secretly learning how to write, she later became a lady-in-waiting in the Imperial Palace. She felt awkward and out of place there, and others felt that she was difficult to approach. During this time, she wrote two books, the most well-known of which is The Tale of Genji. A mere decade after she finished it, the book was distributed throughout the province and is now considered a classic piece of Japanese literature. 
To this day, her work is deemed incredibly important for the insight it provides into the life at court during the Heian period of history. It's also inspired many artists to recreate scenes from the books in addition to its historical significance. Simone Seguin Simone Seguin, also known by her pseudonym Nicole Minet, was an incredible fighter in the French resistance. In 1944, Simone was only 18 years old, but decided that she was grown up enough to join the Franc Tireur et Partisan. At the time, the resistance was made up of only 10% women, but Simone didn't let that deter her. Her first mission was simple, steal a bicycle. Hey, we said it was simple. Armed with just a bike, she used it for delivering messages and staking out targets. Eventually, she moved on to bigger weapons and more dangerous missions. Simone was never one to shy away from the action and was present during many altercations with enemy convoys and trains. When she wasn't risking her life in a hail of gunfire, she was busy falling in love. His name was Roland Boursier, and he was a commander of the Thigh Bars operation. Together, they worked to bring messages to the resistance group to assist them with their missions. She was present at both the liberation of charters, the liberation of Paris, and helped capture 25 Nazi soldiers during her service. When the war was over, Simone decided that she wasn't quite done saving lives yet. She then became a pediatric nurse. Alice Coachman Training for the Olympics is never easy for anyone, but few had it as rough as Alice Coachman. She was born in 1923, and back then, people of color weren't allowed to participate in organized sports or utilize training facilities. Not only did she have no access to a place to work out because of her skin, but her being a woman meant that she faced even more opposition. But she wasn't going to let a little thing like being a woman of color in the time of segregation stop her from achieving her dream. She would race down dirt roads without any shoes and designed and constructed her own equipment to practice with. Despite these setbacks, she was an incredible competitor when she finally got the chance. In 19 in 1948, she qualified to represent the United States at the Olympic Games in London. In order to do that, she had to beat the previous 16-year-old record by three-quarters of an inch with a height of 5'4". At the event, she leapt just over 5'6". Alice admitted that at first, she was so intense she didn't realize she had won until she saw her coach clapping for her. Which one of these incredible women do you think should be the inspiration for a Disney princess? Let us know your pick in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the taco. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.